So I didn't expect to like this movie, right? I did not expect to like it at all. Uh, it's really good. It's it's pure class, right? It is pure, pure, pure class. Uh, uh, really strong recommend. It, it's uh, uh, was it Cillian Murphy? Probably one of his greatest roles. And I like Peaky Blinders a lot. I also like Batman a lot. It's a very clever script from Chris and Nolan. So anyway, as I said, it's three hours long. So I put it on. I saw it literally it's three hours, one minute. I'm like, oh, God, that. I figured I'll watch it over three nights, something like that. So uh, uh, an hour and an hour and 15 minutes in, I had to turn it off and tear myself away from it because my son came home from the war, right, from the army. And so, yeah, I felt, felt it was pretty nice to go, go, go and say hello. Uh, but after that, I returned to it. And again... It flew, right? I get the, the, the difference when you see something of quality as opposed to when you see cat. Like, if you've tried to sit, I have never got through the whole thing. Uh, Doctor Strange in the um, Worlds of Man, there's Doctor Strange 2, right? I like Doctor Strange 1 a lot. I thought that was a really good, enjoyable movie. Couldn't sit through Doctor Strange, but compare that to Spider Man No Way Home. It wasn't the gimmick of having the multiverse and having the multiple different Spider-Men. It was that it was a good, compelling story with good, compelling characters. So this didn't strike me as if it would be a good, compelling story. But actually it is, because the story of anybody's life is a good, compelling story. And the way it's told is, I think, somewhat brilliant. It's, um, it's essentially, how would I describe it? Oppenheimer's memory of his life. And so memories are interesting things. We editorialize memories, right? We, we put our emotional states into memories. We put our, uh, our emotional states on the time of them creating the memory into the memory. We, uh, um, we move things around a little bit. Again, we editorialize in our memories, right? We make it what we, uh, we make what we're feeling and what, and what we think about the event to be uh, more physically representing. So the, that's what this movie does, and does it really well, right? does it really well. Essentially, this is Oppenheimer in the 50s. Uh, he was caught uh, uh, in one of the uh, uh, McCarthy-era trials. And they, uh, it was his, uh, wasn't a trial, it's his review to uh, see if he's going to get his security clearance removed. Which and so the main it's, it's all about the political machination. So essentially, what happened was that he was in college, and college has always been a hotbed for tons of leftists, right? Lots of people in the Communist Party, uh, uh, and he had tons of friends in the Communist Party. And then there came came a time where they got to build. Uh, uh, they have to build this bomb. They have to build it before Hitler does and the Nazis, because otherwise. You know, it, 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 that that's going to be the end of the world. Is it, it one of the lines is I don't know if we, if I can be trusted with it, um, but uh, uh, I know the Nazis cannot be trusted with it. Uh, and I, um, uh, yeah, I, I I understand the impossible position they were in, but the um, what was I going to say? The pain and the angst of the job that they that they felt compelled and forced to do. To create new, uh, new, new uh, nuclear weapons, even though it was uh, um, an absolute necessity, right? Well, it wasn't by the time they finished it, but it, the, the, the Manhattan Project was an absolute necessity, right? Uh, you were uh, um, the uh, the uh, uh, they so they, again they had to hire people with questionable uh, with with not questionable with with communist ties to the past and that that all came up to you know hit you know, hit them in the face but the again the thrust of this movie is oppenheimer's emotional state through his life and basically his life story uh told with by a very very a, a very mature script from christopher nolan right christopher nolan plays with time a lot I and mean, I, I have to rewatch tenant because i'm sure there's a good movie in there somewhere Right, uh, 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 that really is. If I understood it, I'm sure it's a good movie. But Christopher Nolan is known for playing with time, so he plays with time here, and I think he does so very well. Uh, uh, as again, the fractured memory of Oppenheimer is the driving narrative for us, and uh, moreover, how he's caught in the political machinations of Washington, right? Uh, uh, and as told by a fantastic uh, cast. So we got 
yeah, I would say these are the four four main players. Uh, Tom Conti as Einstein, who's in it like in a uh, it's a cameo essentially, right? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. as essentially the bad guy, the senator, and um, Francis Pugh, who uh, 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 the the crappy second Black Widow is his lover, right? And, and yeah, no, so he has a life f- far from sin. Right, he has affairs. He's a womanizer. He's a little bit, he's a little bit weird, right? He's a little bit weird, as as you can imagine. So uh, a lot of the film is his testimony about the Manhattan Project and what it was, and that was fascinating, right? The drive to do it, and then the drive to beat the Germans in doing it, and the management skill uh, of just making your own town and saying we've got to live here for like two or three years until we get this thing done. Uh, 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 brilliant, right? Absolutely brilliant. So the day-to-day thing of, uh, of, of creating the atom bomb, very, very uh, compelling. And you get to the test of it about two hours in. Uh, uh, but again, it's, it's much more about his uh, him justifying his own life, his own existence uh, through through uh, through the trial. So there's, I forgot there's these, uh, uh, there was a controversy about there being full frontal nudity scenes. With uh, Francis Pugh and uh, Cillian, uh, Cillian Murphy, I totally forgot about it. Right, I totally and completely forgot that 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 controversy uh, was going on. And then that, and then I saw it, and it wasn't controversial. It is the same level of risque as you would see on, you know, an after nine o'clock BBC drama any time from the late 70s to the early 80s onwards, right? Uh, uh, they, they they were lovers. They were post-sex, they were post-coital, and they were naked, sitting in chairs talking. So that is... Uh, um, well, you do have a, I think, a really kind of wonderful moment in it where they, he's talking about this lover that he had with his wife is in the room, played by... Oh, what's her name? She's, played this, she's in everything. They wanted to be, be Black Widow. Um... Hang on, let me see if I can pull up a uh, uh, cast list, Oppenheimer cast list. Uh, Emily Blunt, right? Emily Blunt play, plays his, uh, 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 his wife. Uh, uh, and so he's testifying about his infidelity to a certain extent. And she's viewing him naked in the chair, uh, giving the testimony, having sex with parts of few on top of him, right, sitting uh, uh, sitting on top of him, right again. And again, yes, obviously that for escape, but I think it's a very honest drama at the same time, right, uh, uh, which is what it is. It's, it, it's a very honest drama. Um, so uh, Robert Downey Jr. plays uh, Lewis Strauss, who was a, uh, an official and a, uh, was it, Washington, uh, uh, was it, official, who uh, turns out to be the antagonist uh, uh, throughout the movie. Matt Damon is the uh, colonel, becomes general, who's in in charge of the uh, Manhattan Project. Matt Damon plays Matt Damon, right? Matt Damon, you only ever play Matt Damon. Jack Quaid plays uh, uh, Richard uh, uh, Feynman, which I think is funny. Gary Oldman played Harry Tubman. I didn't even realize it was Gary Oldman, right? Uh, uh, I was like, really? That's incredible. Uh, who are the standout? Oh, uh, so there was uh, there was an actor who again seemed like a dodgy bad guy, uh, uh, and I couldn't I, I I knew I'd seen him somewhere before, uh, uh, and it wasn't David uh, Datchmalsian, if that's how you pronounce his name, who you have as a generic dodgy guy in pretty uh, pretty much everything. It was Casey Affleck, right? Uh, and he was uh, Kenneth Branagh was in it. Uh, uh, Alden, er- was it Eric Wright's in it? Uh, one time, uh, uh, and Solo, horribly wasted casting, right? But uh, again, uh, basically, everybody does a very, very, very good job, right? Uh, uh the Scots, uh, the uh, sorry, I just saw Scott Grimes was in it. Uh, uh, the uh, the script is excellent, right? The script is really, really excellent. It's uh, it, you you peel layer after layer after layer after layer of, of, of the man off, right? Uh, and again. Very, very, very uh, uh, compelling viewing. That they're building the the uh, first atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project, is kind of um, 
parenthetical, weirdly enough, even though it's visually, you know, that's a, that's amazing. Like the how he visualizes uh, uh, atomic science is just fantastic, right? You get you 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 get to kind of you get to peer inside not just the mind of the person, but the soul, the essence of the person, uh, um, which I think is a, is a cinematic triumph. It really, it, I, I I would have seen this in the cinema had I known it was good, but you know you can't really trust anything as being good anymore. I mean that 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 that. So I mean I was convinced Mission Impossible was going to be great, and I saw I was like bloody hell, even that's bad. <laughs> right, I'll probably go and see Dune in the cinema, but this this was a real real uh, real find, a real recommend. Uh, liked it a lot, right? Liked it a lot. It it, it oozes class. Professionability, uh, uh, professionalism, uh, uh, great artisans at the top of their game, which is actually what this movie was about, about great artisans in science being at the top of their game. All right. Uh, again, Cillian Murphy's performance, mesmerizing. You can't, you really, you can't take your eyes off him on, uh, on the screen. And he's not a likable character. And yet his, uh, the intensity of his performance is genuinely mesmerizing. Right. Uh, so excellent job, right? Excellent job. Uh, far far better than I ever thought it possibly could be. Huge recommend. It's good. You're going to be able to rent it around Christmas. Right now, you can buy it on streaming for like 20 bucks. Uh, re rental comes out, I think, December 12th or something like that. Um, it's it's a recommend, right? It it this is actually worth. I would say it's worth buying, right? Because it's a it's it's a great movie, right? It's one of Chris and Nolan's best. And Chris and Nolan is a very good director. So, you know, that that one I call recommend. Man. My name's Vila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah.